We've probably all seen large cracks and humps like this in the road, caused by the roots of a large tree at some point. Plants seem to effortlessly break through these hard materials. But have you ever wondered where plants take this power from? And how even small seedlings can develop the strength to break through concrete and asphalt? To better demonstrate this power, let's do a quick experiment with sprouting peas. First, we put dried peas in a glass until they are flush with the top. Then, we fill it up with some water until each pea is covered. And finally, we put something heavy on top, like this stone. Now, if we speed this up for a few hours, we'll see that as the peas soak up the water in the glass and expand, they press the stone upwards. But how does this work? To better understand what is going on, we need to take a look inside the pea cells, where you can find sugar and salt, which both attract water. The water gets into the cell through the cell membrane, which plays a key role here. Because if we take an even closer look, we can see that the cell membrane is so-called semi-permeable, which means it's like a tiny mesh that only allows the small water molecules to traverse through. The concentration of water outside of the peas is a lot higher because the peas were dried. This difference would normally cause the molecules to spread evenly on both sides. But only the small water molecules fit through the semi-permeable membrane because the salt and the sugar molecules are too big. After the water molecules pass the membrane, they then connect to the salt and sugar molecules, which are now just pressing against the membrane, causing the pressure inside the cell and therefore the pea to rise. This process is called osmosis. It is when one substance crosses a semi-permeable membrane in order to equalize the concentrations of another substance. Osmosis is a passive process, which means that no energy is required as we move molecules, in this case water molecules, from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, or down the concentration gradient. Energy would be required when we transport molecules against the concentration gradient. But instead of talking about areas of high and low concentration, we also can speak of water potential. Pure water has a water potential of zero, and every other solution has a negative water potential. The more negative the solution's potential, the less water it contains. The movement of water in plants from an area of less negative water potential to an area of more negative water potential is essential for plants. It helps them to absorb moisture from the soil into their roots and allows the transport of water up the plants. The soil has a less negative water potential than the plant. So water moves from an area of less negative water potential in the soil to an area of more negative water potential in the root. When the water has migrated from the soil into the root of the plant, the concentration gradient at the root hair cell flattens out. This equalizes water potential between the inside of the plant and the surrounding soil, which stops the movement of water in either direction. The plant would therefore no longer have a water supply. In order to prevent this, Ions are constantly being pumped from an area of low concentration in the soil to an area of high concentration in the root. This process is called active transport, which decreases the water potential of the root to a point where it becomes negative enough to create a concentration gradient that allows osmosis to occur again.